In northern Iraq, at least 23 people were killed when two truck bombs struck the offices of Kurdish political parties. The mayor of the town of Tushramatu said the first truck exploded in front of the offices of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan and the Kurdistan Communist Party. The second truck blew up after people gathered around the dead and wounded. It was the second double bombing targeting Kurdish political offices in as many days. In Iraq, heavy clashes between Iraqi security forces and Al-Qaeda-linked insurgents continued in the western Anbar province. Fighting was concentrated in the southern part of the provincial capital, Ramadi, where insurgents took university professors and students as hostages. Clashes also erupted north of Fallujah in the towns of Garma and Sitcher over the weekend. Hundreds of people have been killed in Anbar and tens of thousands displaced since the fighting began in January. In Pakistan, at least 28 people were killed and 26 wounded in an attack on the country's busiest airport. Islamic militants from the Pakistani Taliban attacked airport personnel and travelers at Karachi International Airport shortly before midnight on June 8th, but were eventually killed by security forces. The Taliban told RFERL the attack was in retaliation for the death of their leader, Hakimullah Massoud, in a U.S. drone strike last year. In Russia, a Moscow court sentenced two men to life in prison and three others to terms of 12 to 20 years for the 2006 killing of journalist Anna Politkovskaya. Politkovskaya's son and his lawyer said they're still waiting for the people who ordered the murder to be brought to justice. Politkovskaya's reporting criticized Kremlin policies and rights violations in Chechnya. In Egypt, supporters of new president Abdel Fattah el-Sisi celebrated his inauguration in Cairo. Sisi won the May 26 to 28 general election over a state-approved challenger, leftist politician Hamdan Sabahi. Sisi led last summer's ouster of democratically elected President Mohamed Morsi, who is currently in detention. In Kosovo, supporters celebrated after the ruling Democratic Party of Kosovo declared victory in parliamentary elections. The PDK, led by Prime Minister Hashim Tachi, got 31% of the vote and is seeking partners to form a government. Many Kosovar Serbs took part in the elections for the first time since Kosovo declared independence in 2008. In Kyrgyzstan, police dispersed several protesters in front of the presidential building in Bishkek. The activists were protesting the sale of the Kyrgyz state gas company to Russia's Gazprom and a gas shortage in southern Kyrgyzstan blamed on Uzbekistan. The protesters tried to give gift-wrapped bags of sheep dung to the head of Kyrgyz gas and some politicians. In Afghanistan, the defense ministry in Kabul said that 200,000 security forces personnel will be deployed during the June 14th runoff presidential election. A ministry spokesman told reporters that the army and police were working together to provide security for the election, which pits Abdullah Abdullah against Ashraf Ghani. In Kazakhstan, 13 bands participated in an ethnic music festival called the Spirit of Tengri. The groups play traditional Kazakh music with Western instruments and equipment. The open-air festival aims to promote ethnic Kazakh music among young people. And that's the video roundup from Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty.